Hello there. Um, welcome back, and um, we're going to we're going to do the the next part of this, which is to find the element. Um, it's basically we're going to be coding this function here, this function, and this function here. We'll be coding that function because you want to find the, you want to be able to find the element. So let's um, let us put it in between here, so we don't get any mistakes. And um, yeah, and that, let's start. So um, we are going to. Let me just take a look here. This frame select doesn't take anything, but uh, our um, um, our code here to find element, we're gonna call it find. Well, we're gonna call it find element. This well, basically this here. And let's put a code here. And uh, we're, we are going to pass the, the selector and file. And then actually, we're just going to give the action a default of uh, click. So if it sees, uh, so, so we put, if you write down here, click, then it's going to click on it. And here, we're just going to give this a default of nothing, just uh, blank here. Okay. Um, Again, uh, you may want to make sure uh, element is global. Um, so let's do global. This is here we're gonna uh, we're gonna make the variable element as we here because this this element here has to either be true or false. For this to transverse from this function to this function, you have to make this variable global. Or you can instantiate it right in the beginning here from the top top of the the code and make it global right there. But I, I like to do it. In here, so people can follow along. So when someone reads your code, they understand what's going on. So I'm gonna make this variable uh, global, and I'm gonna initially set it to false. Oops. Initially set it to false. And uh, here we're just gonna use the for loop that we used before uh, up here. This for loop. Use this for loop up here. I'm gonna paste it here, and in this for loop, we are gonna try. Um, we're gonna try. Well, before we do that, we want to use a print a print statement as to uh, what's going. So what, what we're doing because if you have if you make a mistake somewhere, we want to know exactly where we made our mistake. So we're just gonna do a print statement here. And in our print statement, I'm just going to put bracket brackets, put your star there. And because uh, I like to use this sort of notation to help me uh, see what's going on. Uh, and I guess we're using our X path here. And then star means anything, could be any, any sort of tag there. And then brackets here. And I want to use um, okay. I, sorry, my mistake. Again, this has to be an F string, I believe. Yes, this this should be a, an F string. Is it? Mm, yes, this yeah this has yeah. So this has to be an F string. So I'm gonna have to use double the double bracket here just to keep things straight. And inside here, we want to use um, yeah. Again, I want to use um, curly bracket and that'd be X. And over here, another curly bracket, and uh, we want to use the, the selectors. And we need a quotation, single quotation marks up here in here. So what's going to happen is that it's for on the, in the for loop, it's going to try each one of these to look for the selector. So, um, for example, um, what the code looks like is it's going to be it's gonna like for instance for the first let's say we're look for the first uh, for the first loop let's say it's gonna do this let's say I'm, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this as an example so for the first loop it's gonna do use this code right here I'm just put this in here in a, a comment and it's gonna use this bracket and it's gonna try let's say for the first loop it's gonna use at class equals and then it's going to use the, the selector, and we're going to be using this as an example of the selector. And 
and it's basically going to check if this uh, if this is present. This is the X path right here. So this this is what it, so for the first loop, it should be it should be uh, printing out this exactly for the first loop. And for the next loop, it's going to try ID with the same selector. And in the next loop, it'll try four. And if it's found, then it'll, it'll break. If it's not found, then it'll keep on looping un until until something is found. If nothing is found, then it will, it'll just it'll just uh, return false. Oh, I, I forgot to put the accept there. Accept. I believe I use what do I use here for accept. I use accept continue. You can use pass or continue. Doesn't matter. I like to use continue. Continue just uh, continue just goes right back, to, like immediately right back to the beginning of this for loop. Pass basically is basically says skip and it, cont it goes downwards. It continues downwards. Whereas continue, it goes right back to the beginning of the for loop. So I like to use the the continue uh, opposed to the pass. Okay. So we use the print statement there just to let us know exactly what's going on in our code. And I'm going to use an if statement. If action equals click. And so this is, I want to click on the element. Action equals click. Then uh, browser dot find element by find element by x path and uh, hold on find if action equals click follow element by x path and uh, I'll be using um, oh I can use an f string I'm using an f string here just double quotes right there and this is gonna be an F string. F string stands for fast string by the way. Uh, I believe the fast strings can be used in Python uh, 3 but not in Python 2 so I hope, I hope you're using Python 3. Um, here I'm gonna use star and uh, we want to use the um, bracket, bracket and then here you want to use the um, curly brackets and then over here you want to use single quotes and then you want to use the selector here inside the curly brackets that's the selector and then 10 quotes and, and brackets and over here you want to click put down click I believe that's the, the function click there so um, if uh, if action if you for the element if the action equals click it's gonna basically gonna click on that element there so that this will be your uh, like a button so you're looking for the element of the of a button and I want to click on it and uh, just to um, make things nice and clear I'm gonna use a print statement just to show that if it worked then uh, I want to know I want to know if if it, if it did click on it or not so if it, if it was successful then you should have a print statement saying that it was successful. In my print statement, I am going to use, um, again, I'm going to use these brackets here, and I'm going to use a plus sign, and saying that it is it was successful. So click, so it clicked. So it clicked here, and, and the comma, and then I'm going to use the, is it selector, I believe? Yes, selector. So it's going to do, it'll, it'll print out click selector. And I typically like if you want to put colors here. I typically let let the pluses be all green. The stars will be gray, and then the ones that are failed are, are negative, which um, you may I may put down a little bit later. So it's good to have these print statements. Print statements are very important, especially for coding, because you have to know exactly what's going on in your code. And these print statements tell you exactly what's going on in your code and where the error, where the problem occurs. Okay, so we're gonna use an else if, else if statement elf action equals oops key and this is where I want to um, uh, enter a key browser browser 
dot find element. Well, it's basically the same thing as we have here, except instead of click, I'll be entering a key. So exactly the same code as this. And so we're going to enter here uh, send keys and um, this, the keys I want to send is uh, will be file. So uh, file is basically this here. So if I put uh, if so here um, when I'm when I'm writing the the function, if I want to send like keys like enter or my name or a password, I would put it here and it would go down into here and send keys file. Uh, the reason I put the, the keyword, like I know the file, I, the reason I use the, the word file is because sometimes I want to send files. <laughs> and sometimes I want to send keys and sometimes I want to send files, so I had to choose one of them, so I decided to use file. So, But essentially you are sending keys. And again, you want to use a print statement just to, so you see, so you know what's going on in your code. And the print statement, we're going to say, um, Let's say um, send keys, and then you can have this, the you can have is it the selector? No, well yeah, I guess that's, you can use the selector, and then you can use comma, and then maybe the the file as you if you want to see exactly what you sent. And the selector is the selector is something like this. And the key is exactly what you want to send send there. Again, those print statements, I you wouldn't believe how many times uh, those these print statements saved me. How they uh, how I was able to solve a problem based on those uh, those um, having print statements. And let's do another one. The last one be action. Um, so in the when you're solving the recapture check, uh, there I think there's a time when you want to download. Uh, specific um, something specific from the web page like for instance you want to download uh, an attribute uh, like um, like how do I say you want to download as something in the HTML you want to get that that uh, attribute in the HTML because you may have to use that to download an mp3 or, or what whatever audio file because I when I saw the recapture check I saw I re I saw the audio file. I don't need to click on the pictures. I don't like clicking on the pictures. It's too much effort. I solved the audio file. So I want to get the attribute, the attribute for the audio file, and I use that attribute to, uh, I use that attribute to uh, solve the recapture. And uh, if action equals attrib, I'm going to use this uh, variable called source. Again, it's going to be the same code as this, except with the, sorry, let's go back here, where am I, oh, up here. So we don't need this here, we want to get the, the attributes, and I believe to get the attributes, you have to use the use dot get underscore tribute and you need to you need to be specific as to what attribute you want to get I believe uh, the attribute I want to get is this is, is the source of the audio file so that's just um yeah there's a source of the audio file that you want to get and I think I believe that's about it and, Finally, again, we want to use another print statement to show exactly where we are on, on our, in our code. Okay, let's put that print statement right here. And again, let's use uh, get tweet. and again, selector and file. Okay, so um, so once that is done, over here. So once this, 
well, like it's gonna be either one of these that goes, and once either one of these that goes here, um, LF action. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to say like if if this try statement if this try statement is true and you did find your element, then you want to set lm element to true. If, if, if so, if it says true, and if it's true, if you do find an element, then it's not gonna it's not gonna run this line. It's gonna say, "Oh, you found it. You're done," right? But if it's not true, if this is false, then it is, it's gonna say that, "Oh, uh, let's try another frame and it's, and run this code again on another frame." And that's the whole point of this here. The select element is because you want to see if you found it or not found uh, found it. And if you found it, then it's not gonna run this code again. So let's see here, and then you obviously you want to break the for loop. So if you if, if it's true, if you find it and it is true, then you want to break the for, for loop and you're done. Uh, and if it's not true, if if you if you go through all this and and you don't find any of this, then it goes straight to uh, the continue and it'll keep on going until it finds one of these. And if it doesn't find one of these then it's going to remain false. The element's going to remain false. And if the element remains false in this frame select, it's going to run through this line and switch frames. It's going to switch frames and run this function again to see if any of these are present. And once, if any of these are present, the element will, will be true and it will end. So it's not going to, it's not going to go through the next frame because here it's saying, because the, the if statement only runs if this here is true, and that's it. That's that's my code. That's how I solved the, the recapture check. And um, for this part here, get attribute. You probably need that uh, because you want to know where your audio. Well, for me, I want to know where my audio file, like where the audio file resides, and I want to download the audio file, put it into Google Translate, translate the translate the audio file into words, and then put it back into the recapture check to solve for it. But that's another. That's that's an, that's another. Um, you can look that up on your own. That's 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 for another video. And that's about it. That's how I. This is how I sort of like uh, uh, solve my recapture check. Okay, that's it.